10.15, the evening of April 14th, Good Friday. The assassin enters the front doors of the theater, proceeds up the winding staircase to the balcony. He approaches the door. It's one he has seen before, the last time, earlier that day, when he cut a notch into its frame and left a wooden stick. This will protect his escape after the job is complete. The play, Our American Cousin, is entering its climactic scene. The assassin knows this. He's seen the play many times. He flashes his credentials to the messenger outside the door. There are no problems for the assassin to enter the outer chamber to the box, as he is well known, almost famous. The assassin opens the door, sees his target, and waits for the time when the audience will erupt in laughter. The assassin raises his single-shot derringer as the actor, Harry Hawk, completes his now infamous line. You suck, apologizing old man trap! The President of the United States, Abe Lincoln, lays on the floor of the presidential box at Ford's Theater. Surrounded by his wife and theater guests, Major Rathbone and Clara Harris, he's unconscious but still breathing. A small hole behind his left ear is the only sign of the attack. After completing his task, John Wilkes Booth, the assassin, leaps from the presidential box into the stage below, catching the spurs of his boot on the bunting and pitcher of George Washington. In doing so, he lands awkward, breaking his fibula bone and his left leg just above the ankle. Quickly getting up from his fall, Booth raises his large hunting knife into the air and yells, Six Semper Tyrannus, Latin for, as always, to tyrants. He then flees to the back of the stage, out the door, and into the alley, leaving the over 1,000 confused onlookers and the now unconscious president to figure out what had just happened. On April 14th, the night Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater, the United States was quickly ending the Civil War after word of the surrender of General Robert E. Lee at Appomattox. Lincoln was celebrating that night the conclusion of a war that had cost thousands of lives and millions of dollars in damage. For Lincoln, his hopes rested on a new chapter beginning for all Americans. While millions of Americans were celebrating the coming victory with Lincoln, Booth, a Southern sympathizer, was not. Born in Maryland to a family of actors, Booth eventually followed in their footsteps. Originally not very good, he continued to work and found a place to tone his skills in Richmond, where his career blossomed. During the war, he made Washington, D.C. home, living at the National Hotel, but traveled often, as actors did at the time. But as the war progressed in favor of the Union, Booth became very upset. He became even more angry after Lincoln won re-election in 1864. It was then that Booth began recruiting men to help him on a plan that he was developing. John Surratt, George Atzerott, David Harold, and Lewis Powell were the major conspirators. All were Southern sympathizers and thought highly of Booth. The original plan was to kidnap the president while he was at Ford's Theater or on another occasion as he was traveling to the Campbell Hospital and take him to Richmond, the Confederate capital, and there hold him for ransom in order to free thousands of Confederate POWs. The fall of Richmond and an outspoken accomplice who thought the idea was ridiculous ended the plot. This didn't stop Booth though. By now he was thinking revenge for the South's defeat. When Booth arrived at Ford's Theater on the morning of April 14th to get his mail, he was told that the president was going to be attending the show that evening. This was all the information he needed. Booth quickly left and arranged a meeting with his conspirators, possibly at the Herndon House. The plan called for three attacks to happen simultaneously around 10.15 p.m. that night. George Atzerat, a Confederate spy and carriage painter, would attack Vice President Andrew Johnson in his hotel room. Conspirator Lewis Powell, a former Confederate POW, would attack Secretary of State Seward in his home. And Booth, the third and final part of the plan, would do the honor of killing the President at the theater. After arranging the things he needed, Booth headed to Ford's theater late in the evening. He rode up to the back and dropped off his horse went inside briefly and exited a side door, then went to a nearby tavern for a few drinks, and there he waited. Around 10.15, Booth entered the front doors of Ford's Theater, casually talked with the ticket taker, and headed up the stairs to the president's box 
and the destiny that awaited him. At the same time that Booth was at Ford's Theater, Lewis Powell and David Harold were approaching the home of the Secretary of State, William Seward. David Harold, though, did not continue inside. Instead, left to meet Booth. Powell forcefully entered the house, made his way to the third floor bedroom where Secretary Seward was sleeping, and attacked him with his hunting knife, thrashing at his face and neck. Powell was then run out by Seward's son and nurse. He survived the attack, but was forever disfigured. George Otzerat was assigned to attack Vice President Andrew Johnson in his room at the Kirkwood Hotel, ironically which was the same place he was staying. When 1015 hit, Otzerat couldn't find the courage to complete the task and fled. It wasn't until later that the Vice President was awoken and told of the President's situation. After the President was shot, he was attended to by 23-year-old Dr. Charles Lilly. After examining the President, he said, his wound is mortal, it is impossible for him to recover. The president was then moved across the street to a back bedroom of the Peterson boarding house. When it was mentioned, there was a room available. Lincoln was placed on the small bed diagonally, and then a night-long death watch began. His breathing grew faint, and his body was cold to the touch. At 7.22 a.m., the next morning, April 15th, President Abraham Lincoln died. After it was announced, it was Secretary Stanton who spoke the words that will long be remembered. Now he belongs to the ages. Booth had been moving quickly. After running out the backstage at Ford's Theater, he jumped on his horse and moved quickly out of the city. He rode out of the alley onto F Street, continued east to New Jersey Ave, around the Capitol, and then continued southeast down Pennsylvania Avenue.